We have a big and exciting announcement on the show today as the Locked On Podcast Network launches the new Locked On Sports Atlanta, and we have a special guest joining the podcast in Grant McCauley to go over this new network in more detail with us, and also we'll get Grant's thoughts on the Braves' upcoming season. It's an exciting episode of Locked On Braves, so let's get into it. You are Locked On Braves, your daily Atlanta Braves podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, and welcome back to the Locked On Braves podcast, part of the Locked On Sports Atlanta network where we talk about your Atlanta Braves every day. I am your host, Jake Mastriani. You can follow me on Twitter at Shortstop Ball. Check out my bio there to see where I am covering the game of baseball, including the Atlanta Braves in written form over at TomahawkTake.com. Also, make sure you follow the podcast on Twitter at LockedOn underscore Braves. Make sure you subscribe to the podcast wherever you listen to podcasts and subscribe to us on YouTube as well. And thanks for making Lockdown Braves your first listen each and every day. We post episodes daily, five days a week, Monday through Friday, and we are free and available on all platforms. And we have a very exciting episode today, as we always do on Lockdown Braves. But today comes with a huge announcement as the network has launched Locked On Sports Atlanta, where we're going to be covering all of your favorite sports teams every day. And we have some new platforms for the Atlanta Braves, where we're going to be doing a postcast that will be hosted by Grant McCauley. And Grant has joined us on the show today to talk about this announcement and what his role will be in that so, Grant, go ahead and bring you in here. Thanks so much for joining the podcast. So excited about what the network is doing with this. So tell us a little bit about you and tell us about your role with this new Locked On Sports Atlanta. Absolutely. Well, Jake, thanks for having me, first and foremost. I mean, I, I think you and I have already gotten a chance to talk a little bit. And the number one thing I look forward to bringing to the Locked On Sports Atlanta, Locked On Sports Network in general is just talking about baseball, talking about the Atlanta Braves. That's something I've been doing for going on 20 years now, and I've been a fan even longer than that. So it's like this perfect opportunity to reach in every day after a game and just have that discussion about what's going on, what it meant, and, of course, getting you ready for tomorrow. So you and I are going to have a lot of fun, I think, this season, talking about all the things the Atlanta Braves could be poised to do because we're certainly coming off one of the best seasons in franchise history, the improbable run to the World Series. Man, I'm excited to see what this club can do when it comes to defending that title. Yeah, it should be a, a lot of fun, exactly. And I'm sure most of you are, are very familiar with, with Grant's work, has a, a huge following among Braves country, been watching his work for years. So, so glad to have him on as part of the network. And like Grant said, we're going to be doing a postcast after just about every Atlanta Braves game. And Grant's going to be hosting that, and I'll be joining him uh, ever so often as I can to do that as well. And we'll probably be hosting some postcasts as well. So, uh, Grant, if you don't mind, just give uh, the fans, the listeners, a little bit more information of what this postcast will look like, what the format will be. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, folks who followed me for a long time know I've done pregames and postgames and worked in radio for a long time, done all kinds of reports and podcasts and things. So, the idea of the postcast is to come in right after the Braves game, just as soon as we can get in and just start talking about what we've just seen, how the club's doing, and 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 clearly have all the discussions, analysis, and you know, fan feedback and other stuff too. We want to make this a little bit interactive, so we're going to look to integrate that too. So uh, Jake and myself will just have those great conversations about baseball afterwards. Hopefully, we'll be talking about more Braves wins than Braves losses. That's really the goal, I think, each and every year. But yeah, the postcast will be available. It'll be on YouTube. You'll be able to subscribe there. The audio will be part of the uh, Lockdown Braves, which I think will be something for folks to take with them as they go, anywhere they go. And uh, you can find it wherever you get your podcast. So it's just a great opportunity, I, I think, to just tap into what I think everybody wants to do after a game is talk about what just happened and get ready for that next day. And we're going to do all that and more. Yeah, I'm, I'm look, looking forward to it. Um, and this, just so you know, this the postcast will obviously be a, you know an immediate 
reaction breakdown to the game. It won't be in place of the Lockdown Braves podcast. I will still be doing uh, a podcast daily on Lockdown Braves, uh, breaking down the games as well, but also talking about you know news, prospects, all of that. Uh, so it, you'll have plenty of, of Braves coverage to listen to each and every day, which as fans, that's what you should want. So yeah. I'm really looking forward to this opportunity uh, with Grant to be able to be part of the postcast and to add this to the network. Like I said, you know, should be a lot of fun, should have plenty of Braves content out there for you. And as Grant talked about, what a year to do it coming off a World Series championship should be a very fun season. Speaking of which, you already know my thoughts on the Braves offseason. Next, we'll see what Grant has to say about the moves that Alex Antopoulos made this past offseason. By now, this is the time of year. I've pretty much given up on all my New Year's resolutions, but not this year, thanks to Built Bar. Built Bar is the best tasting protein bar out there, and they're great for you as well. Most of them only have about 130 calories, 4 grams of sugar, 4 net carbs, and 17 grams of protein. Compare that to a candy bar, which usually has around 200 to 300 calories. And again, these taste just as good as a candy bar, if not better. They're covered in 100% real chocolate and many delicious flavors out there. And they're constantly coming out with new flavors. You got mint brownie, coconut, coconut almond, cookies and cream. Grant, I haven't had lunch yet. I'm going to have to grab one of these here uh, really quickly. Um, but make sure go to built.com. Use promo code LOCKED15 and get 15% off your order. Again, use promo code LOCKED15 at checkout for 15% off your order at built.com. All right, Grant, it was a it was a difficult offseason for fans, GMs, everybody with the, yeah. the lockout, everything going on. I think it was even especially difficult for Alex Anthopoulos. He already mentioned he did not like the quickened pace of free agency after the lockout. That's not really how he he does business and you had the whole freddie freeman situation and, and saga to deal with but despite all that i thought this was the best offseason alex and offices has had yet i thought he did made tremendous moves big decisions great decisions to set this team up for success this year year and years to come but give me your thoughts your grade on the moves that alex made this offseason I would have to give him a really solid A, just especially when you consider you had about 100 days that you couldn't do anything as an executive. You couldn't sign anybody other than the minor league deals, and we knew this club had questions that it was going to have to answer, and specifically first base. There's no bigger question than that. What was going to happen? Is Freddie Freeman going to return? Or was he going to go elsewhere? And if he does, then what do the Braves do? And we got our answer fairly quickly after the lockout that just didn't seem to be a way for the two sides to come to an agreement. And with that, the Braves pivoted and got all-star first baseman Matt Olson, who is now signed to the biggest deal in franchise history in terms of contract value. And that is a very new and very different thing for the Braves. He's called it the Freddie Freeman saga. I like that. And Freddie's gone out to Hollywood now. He's going to be part of a very talented Dodgers team. And you know, if you're writing the script to this movie, it feels like they're going to see each other again in October's ahead. And possibly, very possibly, if not probably, here in October of 2022. But all the moves that needed to be made, I think, were made. Would I like to have seen maybe one more kind of proven starting pitcher? It didn't have to be a big name, just somebody that might be a, a more dependable arm because you do have a few youngsters that are gunning for the last couple of spots in rotation. That would really be the only thing I'd need to see. But when you talk about adding Matt Olson, bringing back Eddie Rosario, signing a Kenley Jansen, and, and doing some of the other moves that Alex did and in very short order, I think he's got this club poised to be at the top of the NL East again. And that's where it all starts, right? Is you got to win your division, punch your ticket into the postseason. And as we saw last year, anything can happen. Yeah, I was on a podcast the other day, you know, getting asked this same question. And, and you know, I had to say, how can you not give him an A or, or an A plus right. with the way that he handled everything? When you don't bring back the face of the franchise, and yet the fan base still loves you and maybe loves you even more. Um, for those who at least know how the situation or how yeah. we believe the situation played out, that is an incredible job as a GM. Um, look, I was here all offseason saying Freddie's coming back. There's just no way he's leaving. Me Freddie's too. coming back. Um, and then it just didn't happen, and he pivots. And part of that is, and I wanted to get your thoughts on this too, is 
I just never thought he'd give up the prospects it would take to get Matt Olson. Um, because what I, you know, I was also saying all off season, it's going to take either Harris or Langoliers. They got to be part of that package. And, you know, many fans were telling me that's, that's too much. That's too costly. And I'm, I'm saying it's got to be one of those two. Not only was it one of those two, he gave up three other high quality prospects in that deal. That's what shocked me the most. It's not only did they not get Freddie Freeman, but we saw Alex do something he has yet to do as the Braves GM and make a big prospect trade. Yeah, and this is a trade that I've been thinking, this kind of trade, where you do give up these top prospects and get somebody who's a real impact player, a, a true blockbuster trade, let's call it that. I've been thinking this needs to happen since the offseason of 2019, you know, when Josh Donaldson had come in and maybe he's going, and if you don't have Josh Donaldson coming back, what do you do at third base? Maybe you don't just fixate on third base. Maybe you make a big trade for a corner outfielder. I mean, these were the things that I was thinking about even a couple, almost three years ago now, which is crazy to think about. But Alex went out and made free agent signings and did other things and uh, obviously built from within with some of the prospects he had to work with to fill a lot of the Braves' needs. But, yeah, he hadn't really made that signature trade. This would most certainly be his signature trade. It's not the same thing as making thrifty or smart deals at the trade deadline to supplement your team. This was really, Jake, I mean, taking the, the franchise face, the guy that had kind of been the, the captain of the ship, putting him off the ship, bringing on a whole new guy, not changing the crew, but bringing in a whole new guy. So I, I don't know if that metaphor or that analogy really uh, really works. We'll see if the Braves are able to sink or swim with their new first baseman. I think there'll be an awful lot of swimming going on because he's very talented, but a paradigm shift for the club. We'll call it that. It, it was very different to think about Freddie Freeman, not in a Braves uniform. It's going to look weird for a while. And I was like you. I thought this is going to get done, and the only way I don't believe it is when he shows up wearing somebody else's uniform. But the Braves didn't wait for that to happen. Alex Anthopoulos decided, hey, we got to pivot. We're not going to get this deal done. We can't get locked out of Matt Olson, and he paid the prospect price. And, uh, and being able to extend Matt Olson, I think, justifies and, and it really makes that deal worth it at that point. If you let him go after two years and can't re-sign him and you trade a bunch of prospects that become stars somewhere else, that's the kind of thing I think that fans, you know, feel hurt about for much longer. And it makes them more wary of trading away your prospects when the deals don't work out. Yeah, every, everybody was calling out, you know, the Mark Teixeira trade yeah. uh, when that happened. But, you know, that's what, you know, that's what I said on here. That's a, that's a huge prospect package. One, Alex has never given up here. He has to extend Matt Olson to complete mm -hmm. this ordeal. And I think he knew that. And it's why he called his agent as soon as the deal was done and said, Hey, how do we get this done before the press conference happens? And he did. And it was a it's and it's a great deal on paper. It looks amazing. I think the AAV is like 21, 22 million yep. a year. Um, that's just, you know, an incredible price for one of the best first basemen in the game. So again, just an amazing offseason there for that alone. But what was the one signing? that really surprised you this offseason? I think the, the answer for most people has to be Kenley Jansen, right? Yeah. I mean, you thought if the Braves were going to add any more, if they were going to continue to you know, upscale their payroll, which they have now jumped into the top 10 in all of Major League Baseball, where are they going to go get the starting pitcher that you felt like maybe they needed for that you know third, fourth spot in the rotation if you wanted to take some pressure off of Ian Anderson and you know find that veteran guy, whether it was going to be a Zach Greinke or someone else. But most of the appealing options for that particular role, I think as far as free agents are concerned, had already come off the board. So if you can't make yourself better in rotation, Alex Anthopoulos has been Anthopoulos has been really methodical about this. We'll make our bullpen stronger. If we know that starting pitching is not exactly where we want it or we've got question marks, a great way to support that group is to get another talented reliever and shorten the game. And that's what they've continued to do. The night shift gets a brand new you know, manager, if you will, for that shift, a shift leader, let's call him that, uh, Kenley Jansen, who has a pretty serious pedigree. He's pitched in the biggest games. He's helped the Dodgers win a World Series, and he's you know, made himself one of the best closers of the last 10, 15 years easily. And it, that's the kind of arm that if you can add, I mean, even Will Smith said, look, I'm not married to the closer role. If you want to bring somebody in here, Let's win another ring and have another parade because those are things I like. And I feel like that kind of move might have surprised some people. But when you see how much sense it makes to continue to add the layers of depth and talent in the bullpen, that was a huge reason why the Braves won it all last year was being able to lean on that group. But you can't do that 162 times and expect them to be ready to do it again in October. That's an awful lot to ask. So Jansen, 
is a big surprise for me, but a great addition to the Braves if he pitches up to the capabilities that he's shown over the last decade. Yeah, absolutely. I kind of set you up for that one. I, I think it's pretty, yeah. pretty obviously <laughs> Kenley Jansen. After you know, after he signed Rosario and McHugh, I said, okay, well, that's the money mm -hmm. you saved this year by you know going with Olsen over Freeman. I figured yeah. they were done. And then I, I believe it was on like a Friday afternoon or something. Bam, sixteen million given to Kenley Jansen and. Yeah, like you talked about it. I mean, a great move. We were already expected to have a pretty good bullpen, but now it's just so deep that a guy like Luke Jackson, who's hurt in spring training right now, that was supposed to be your top righty, now mm -hmm. you're kind of like, you know, we can we can do without it for you know a week or two if needed, because you got Jansen, you got McHugh mm -hmm. from the right side now. So um, the bullpen's just so deep. I think that's going to play a huge role this year, especially early in the season when starters may not be stretched out. So. I, I I agree. You know, if you can't get that veteran starter that maybe you were looking for, just continue to build on what's already a strength in that bullpen. And yeah. I know you mentioned the fact you would like to see him get, you know, another starter for the rotation to help some of these young guys. Is there any other move out there or any other weakness that you see for this team going into the season? With the universal DH, I don't worry as much about the bench, although injuries can change that real quick, but every club has to deal with that reality. It's hard to have a plan B for every possible scenario that can go on. So maybe you look around at the end of spring training and see somebody doesn't you know, catch on with one club, and maybe you get an option there that you didn't have before. So that might be the only other thing that I'd really say you know, I'd like to see, maybe a little bit more versatility or a little more pop off the bench. I mean, even a guy like Adrianza last year, he played a good role for the Braves, but he left and he didn't make a whole bunch of money to, you know, to take his talents elsewhere. But he was a nice piece throughout the season. Not to say that some of the guys who will be on the bench, I really liked the Manny Pena signing just as an aside to add some depth at the catcher level, particularly if you end up trading away a guy like Shea Langoliers and, you know, your future, at least your short term future needed to be pretty much set in stone at that point. And I think that it is so. Um, maybe just supplementing the roster as you need to. And as we've seen with Alex Anthopoulos, he likes to hold a little bit in reserve for the trade deadline. He seems to be a busy guy around that time. I don't know what would give me that impression, though. He always <laughs> seems to save some of his best work for late July. Yeah, no, for sure. I mean, he basically won a World Series with it last yeah. year. So, um, yeah, I think it was a great offseason. I mean, you're always going to have, you know, question marks and, you know, injury is always going to be, uh, a, a question, something that a lot of teams deal with. and um, But again, overall, I think Alex Antopoulos did a great job of putting a team together capable of making another run, of winning a division, and that's all you can really ask for you know, as a fan. Next, we'll turn our attention to the upcoming season and get some predictions and projections from Grant. After months of playing, college basketball has determined the top teams for the Final Four and will determine this year's national champion this coming weekend. BetOnline.net is your number one source for all your betting needs and sports info. From all the latest odds, contests, and player props, you name it, BetOnline remains the best spot for all your latest sports developments, including podcasts and reviews for all of the leagues this season. And it's not just basketball. BetOnline is your continued source for all your sport wagering information needs, including live betting and your favorite Vegas casino games, head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends in action. Bet online where the game starts. All right, Grant, we talked about it. The Braves are coming off a World Series championship. How do they follow that up? Obviously, repeating in Major League Baseball is very difficult. We haven't seen it done in over 20 years now. Haven't right. seen it done in the National League since the 70s. Like I just finished saying, the Braves put together a team that's more than capable of getting the job done. But for you, what has to happen in order for this team to repeat in 2022? Well, a lot of things have to work out when it comes to the injury side of things. I think that's really where any club's best laid plans can come apart. And if you come off a year like the Braves did where – yeah, they had to get real creative at the trade deadline. They had to do, you know, some moves that they hoped would allow them to cover for the loss of a player that one guy can't replace. And winning the World Series without Ronald Acuna Jr. Heck, winning the division without Ronald Acuna Jr. seemed like a, a just a really far fetched idea when this club couldn't get to and stay at 500. So I think consistency 
it is a big thing, you know, finding ways to you know, have this club come together early on. It, yeah, it's there's been some changes. There's a little bit different, uh, you know, I guess formula, if you will, when you talk about Freddie Freeman being gone and Matt Olson checking in at first base, but he's going to be here for a while. A lot of the other guys that are back are, you know, tried and, and true now and proven through the postseason. They've won it all. But I think now the the Braves aren't going to sneak up on anybody either. That's another thing that I think they got to kind of keep in mind is that everybody's going to be gunning for them because they won the biggest prize in the sport. So it's less about having to prove it. It's more about having to find a way to replicate your success. And that I think is where the consistency comes in. I think Brian Snitker does a good job of having his group in the right mindset day in and day out. I think he's got an incredible coaching staff that helps out in making all of that happen. So it, it'll really be about kind of weathering the storms when they do come and just trying to find the ways to win consistently. Winning series goes all the way back to, I mean, it's as old as baseball, but it goes all the way back to the Bobby Cox days. We win two out of three. We're yeah. going to be in a good place when we head toward October, and more years than not, they were. So it'll be interesting to see if they can do the things they did last year and if they can kind of join what the Big Red Machine was at the last National League team to win yeah. back-to-back World Series. That's been a minute. I wasn't around when the Big Red Machine was, so I would certainly like to see the Braves create their own version of that if they can. Yeah, something, and I mentioned this on the podcast the other day, that I thought was really uh, interesting, I guess you could say. Jeff Brancourt mentioned it on the, the broadcast, is that you know this Braves team, it brings back a lot of players that obviously were there for the World Series, but it brings a lot of players that weren't a part of that and a lot of big pieces when you think. You know, Ronald Acuna Jr., like you said, wasn't part of that World Series. Marcelo Zuna wasn't. Mike Soroka wasn't. You know, and he may not be this year. Who knows what we get from him? Right. But, you know, Matt Olson wasn't. I mean, there are some key contributors on this team, which, you know, some of them may have gotten a ring out of it, but still they weren't able to experience that. And I think, you know, that gives them just a little bit more hunger to want to be a part mm -hmm. of that, what they got to witness firsthand last year. So I think that could, you know, play a big key as far as you know and i don't think the team will get complacent like you said i think the coaching staff is so good that they'll have them ready to go every day but i think that will just kind of be an added motivator for guys like ronnie who you know wants to be on that world series oh, stage yeah. uh and just and i want him on that stage too i think all of baseball does so that's really what i'm hoping for and i hope that just keeps those guys you know motivated uh going forward as i'm sure they will be yeah, I think um, that it will, and that's going to be the exciting thing is it's going to be different, but having a guy like Ronald Acuna Jr. playing on a big stage in October with the lights are brightest, I mean, that's something we can all look forward to, and hopefully we get to see that. Hopefully we get him back pretty soon as well because, man, I have never seen anybody put on a series of not just off-season workouts, but this has been going on for him for, what, eight or ten months since the knee injury. He is chomping at the bit to get back in there and be a big part of what the Braves do this year. Yeah, I can't wait to see him in there. And once you put him in there, it's going to be hard to, to hit the brakes. Yeah. Um, but I know they want to try to be as careful with him as possible to make sure that when he does get back out there, he's ready to go. Um, a couple of predictions I wanted to get for, from you real quick. Which Braves player had the breakout performance? Which Braves player could you see maybe taking a step back in 2022? I think the guy that needs to have the breakout performance is kind of an obvious one. He's been around for a while and he's shown flashes of perhaps being that guy. And I think you already know where I'm going with this. It's Kyle Wright. I mean, this was a top draft pick for the Braves quite a few years ago. He got to the big leagues pretty quick, but he never really has seemed to get a longstanding opportunity to stay in the Braves rotation. Part of that is because, you know, you need results. And part of that is because his inconsistency really didn't lead the Braves to feel like they could count on him at times. But he has you know, been in this place before where he's made the opening day roster, been in the rotation, and then found himself back in the minor league. So uh, if Kyle Wright can give the Braves some consistency and tap into what he found in the postseason in 2021, that would be a huge boost to a Braves rotation that we mentioned could possibly have used a little bit of reinforcing were the right guy out there. Now, on the flip side of that coin, the guy that is going to have to kind of prove it and – We'll see what he's able to do. It won't be a sophomore slump because it's his fourth season, but Austin Riley, he took the league by storm. He may be the best third baseman in the National League, if not all of baseball, numbers-wise. I mean, that Jose Ramirez guy is pretty good too, but, man, Austin Riley, he's not going to be sneaking up on anybody this year either. But the consistency he had last year going through some any highs and lows that came along and getting back on track and 
the hard work ethic that this kid has, I feel like he's in a good place to pick up where he left off, but that's going to be the big challenge. There could be a little step back as the league adjusts to all the adjustments that Austin Riley made in 2021. Yeah, I like both of those. You know, I've been saying the Braves need a a four starter. One of those young guys, whether it's Wright, Noah, Davidson, Moeller, maybe Elder or Strider uh, mm -hmm. at some point in the season, they need somebody else just to take a spot in that rotation and hold on to it because as good as, you know, Charlie and Max and Ian are, you know, all three of them making 30, 32 starts a year, likely not going to happen. At some point, you're going to need somebody else to step mm -hmm. up and be a mainstay in that rotation and be consistent. And I think Kyle Wright could be that guy. I think he he will at least get a chance to be that guy. And, yeah, I've been saying for Austin Riley, I think he takes a step back. But taking a step back from an MVP season, I think it could still be all-star caliber. No doubt. Um, but I, I do think, you know, he probably will step back a little bit. But again, I thought he should have been top three, top five in the MVP last year. He had that kind of season. Um, but yeah, I, I definitely want to see him, you know, build on that, do that again and have that consistency because you talked about it when he had, you know, maybe some uh, cold streaks last year. It didn't turn into a month long cold streak. It right. was a, it was a week. It was a two weeks. Because you look at his month to month last year, he had an 800 OPS in every month, but one. I, I want to say it was like June. Um, I mean, that is that is consistency right there. Can he do that again? I think he can, but I think we still need to see that happen, kind of like you talked about. Yeah, and he showed a lot. I mean, the power to all fields and the ability to cut down on his swing and the approach and the execution at the plate took huge strides last year, and I don't really see that changing this year. I think he's really tapped into something and worked and worked and worked throughout his entire professional career to get there. I'm happy to see him have that success. I'll be even happier to see him have some more. Yeah, absolutely. All right, where do you see the Braves finishing in 2022 in terms of wins? Uh, in the division, and do they make the postseason? I think the Braves are a team that can win 95 games. I think they win the National League East again, and I think they get into the postseason and have a club that could run through October. There will be some obvious hurdles, some obvious old foes and new foes waiting for them when they get to October. One old friend who becomes a new foe could be waiting for him in Freddie Freeman and the Dodgers. So we'll see how it all plays out. But right now, looking at this club and seeing its strengths and getting excited about the potential of the Braves with Ronald Acuna Jr. back in there. I think they're the class of the National League East again, despite all the best efforts by the New York Mets to outspend everybody. Okay. I was going to ask, who's their biggest competitor in the East? You think it's yeah, the Mets? I do. I do. I think the Phillies will be pesky. I think the Marlins have improved. The Nationals can't be any worse than they were last year, which makes the divisional play tough because there's always that club that they may not win the division, but they're going to be a real pain in the side of a club that's trying to because you have – too much trouble putting them away and you lose some games you're not supposed to in division. So that's the kind of thing, the spoiler role that is out there that some of those clubs will really be happy to play. If you let this thing get too tight in August and September, you may not, you know, you may not get the results that you want, even though on paper, I think the Braves are a club that can, you know, take anybody's best in a series, whether that's three, five or seven games. Yeah, absolutely. Those Marlins are going to be quite pesky this year i believe um what are you looking forward to the most with this braves team going in 2022 besides ronald acuna jr because i think he he's the obvious answer for a lot but what are you looking forward to watching the most with this braves team i mean the first season of matt olson and what this transition does look like and i want to mm -hmm. start to over the next couple of weeks because yeah we're going to see la early and then freddie freeman's going to come back again in june but at some point this narrative is going to shift from Oh, Matt Olson and Freddie Freeman, Freddie Freeman and Matt Olson, and where they have to be mentioned together in every sentence to the point where you just start talking about Matt Olson, Braves first baseman. I'm looking forward to that being the thing. I understand why it hasn't been a thing quite yet, but I'm excited to see what this new start, him coming home, being a guy that's from the Atlanta area, getting to play for the team that he grew up pulling for. And oh, by the way, I mean, he's one of the best first basemen in baseball. The Braves got younger at that position and might have gotten even better at that position. We'll find out what he's able to do. So I'm looking forward to that. I'm anticipating the beginning of the Matt Olson era. Yeah, me too. I think that's going to be very exciting, and I, I can't wait until we stop comparing the two, but I'm afraid we Great. will for the next five or six years. I just think it's always going to be there, especially because I expect these two teams to meet 
-hmm. the postseason. But I am glad when it's just, like you said, Matt Olson, first baseman, Atlanta Braves, and that's what it is. Um, Grant, thank you so much for joining the podcast to do this. Obviously, you can follow Grant on Twitter at Grant McCauley and be looking out for us April 7th or as we'll be doing the postcast for just about every single Atlanta Braves game. And that'll be part of the Locked On Sports Atlanta podcast and YouTube channel that will be coming out. So um, be looking out for that here very soon as we are less than a week away from opening day. And Grant, I can't be more excited. Yeah, I'm definitely excited as well. Looking forward to this great new chapter with uh, Locked On Sports Atlanta and looking forward to talking about the 2022 Braves with you all summer long and maybe even into November. Let's do that. Yeah, absolutely. I'm on board. Well, that will do it for this episode of Locked On Braves. Be sure to follow us on Twitter at Locked On underscore Braves. You can follow me on Twitter at, lock, at Shortstop Ball and make sure you subscribe to the podcast wherever you get your podcast and we will talk to you next time.